people's personalities kind of dictate how they're going to cope with something. You know, I don't sleep normally and I don't feel normal. Uh, I do feel that uh, I live in a bit of a, a separate universe from everybody else. I'm a person-centered counselor, right, which is a very specific kind of counseling developed by Carl Rogers. He noticed that in the root cellar under his parents' farmhouse, if there was a tiny crack of light, that the organisms would put out feelers and go towards the light, grow towards the light. It was life searching out light. All life on Earth seems to have some sort of internal representation of a day. The ability to be able to anticipate gives you an enormous selective advantage. So if you know that in three hours' time it's going to be light and you can be out there you know, doing all the things you need to do, uh, find food, find a mate, then you can gear up physiology and behaviour in advance. Core body temperature can go up, increase metabolism, increase muscular efficiency, alertness can start to rise to look out for predators, and this internal clock is tweaking, fine-tuning every aspect of our physiology and behaviour to optimally exploit the daytime environment. And the most important external regulatory factor is light. It's the light-dark cycle that forces the internal day to match precisely the external 24-hour rotation of the Earth. We studied initially mice and then humans who had lost their visual cells. They had their eyes, but they hadn't got the rod and cone photoreceptors within the eye. And to our, I suppose, amazement, even though they were visually blind, they had no sense of vision. They could still use their eyes for the detection of the overall amount of light in the environment and set their body clocks and were perfectly aligned to the external world. And that was the first clear indication that there had to be another class of light sensor within the eye, completely different from the rods and cones. And that led to the discovery that a small number of ganglion cells, those cells within the retina that form the optic nerve, and about one in a hundred of those ganglion cells were shown to be directly light sensitive. And it's those cells that project to the clock centers in the brain and regulate the internal day. If you are visually blind, these individuals should be told, still seek out sufficient light to lock on the internal clock to the external light dark cycle. A more radical problem, of course, is those individuals who have lost their eyes completely. My name is Meredith Plum, and I uh, lost my sight when uh, I had an accident, a chemistry experiment. It was intended to be a volcano, and in f instead of it erupting like a lava flow, it just blew up. Um, it just blew up in my face. Uh, and of course, my eyes were badly burned, and uh, gradually lost my sight over the years. In my 40s, I had no sight at all. It was explained to me that if I wanted a cosmetic improvement, that if I uh, just let them remove the eyes and then you put a cosmetic shell over it, it never occurred to me that there might be any uh, detrimental effect of that because nobody had ever said uh, that there were cells in the, in the retina that uh, <laughs> were light sensitive, even if you couldn't see. And then after that, started to notice the difference in my sleep patterns. There is no proper pattern. It tends to be either 90 minute or three hour cycles, but it's all round the clock. When I was first contacted by the group at Oxford who were doing this research to ask me, do I have strange sleep patterns? I went, do I? <laughs> you know, and they couldn't believe how weird my sleep patterns were. The studies that we've been doing on individuals who lack eyes reinforces the fact that those of us who do have eyes really do need to embrace light and have all the health benefits of a normally synchronized circadian and sleep rhythm. To get a really good hit of light on the clock, you need around about a thousand to two thousand lux. And of course we can read, you know, easily below one lux. And we live our lives in dim, dark caves. 
But shortly after dawn, environmental light is some 50 to 100 times brighter than average office or home lighting conditions. By noon, it's some 500 to 1,000 times brighter. If you take a lux meter to the window, you'll get about three or 4,000 lux. But a meter or so into the room, that's dropped often to below 100 lux. And that isn't sufficient to give those receptors their daily light hit to regulate the internal clock. So in many respects, I think we can think of ourselves as a, a light-deprived species. We're inside much of the time, and we don't appreciate how little light exposure we get because the visual system is so good at working under such a broad dynamic range. When you live with something like this, you can't help but contemplate it all the time. What is going on? Why am I depressed? Or why am I sleepy? You know. So what can we do for these individuals? And at the moment, there's not a great deal. We, we're getting a pretty good idea of what genes are turned on and off as a result of light hitting that molecular clockwork. And using that information, we can then uh, find drugs that will essentially provide a pharmacological mimic of light on the molecular clock. And there are some in the pipeline. We can actually shift the clock in a very systematic way with some of these drugs, both in, in cells in dishes and in mice. And the question is, will this work and help consolidate the sleep wake cycle of, of individuals who have experienced eye loss? There are people who come in with their sole complaint is seasonal affective disorder. They just get terribly miserable every winter. My partner who travels a lot he often uh, suffers quite a lot from jet lag. We seem to have just not recognised the importance of sunlight in regulating our health, well-being, productivity, everything. It's fascinating. Having a hopefully deep knowledge of these new photoreceptors, it does make you think slightly different about the light environment. When you experience that, that joy of, of a beautiful, crisp morning light and a blue, blue sky, and you get a sense of what that signal is actually doing to you beyond vision. I, I, I do, I suppose, a bit geeky, think about it in that way too. My daughter's teenage friends would come and confide in me all the time. And uh, I just realised it, it is a bit like having a built-in confessional box, you know. I don't have any preconceived notions about anybody that comes in. And the psychotherapy that I do is try to provide the light of unconditional positive regard, empathy, so that the organism can, can flourish. <laughs>